Welcome to Think Big with Dan and Kasim. Join host Dan Melnick and Kasim Masood as they explore big ideas, limitless possibilities, and engage with visionaries, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders who dare to dream big, get inspired, motivated, and find practical tips for personal growth. Think big, dream bigger, and ignite your potential. All right, welcome to Think Big with Dan and Cosm. So Jocelyn, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, tell us where you live and what you do for a living. Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me, Dan. So my name is Jocelyn Corey, and I am the proud owner of The Cozy Tangerine, which is mainly an online business. Um, we sell crochet apparel, accessories, and decor. And when I say we, I mean me, because it's literally just me. <laughs> so I always have fun like typing that in emails and stuff. I'm like, we, and I'm like, it's just me. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm i based in Norton, Massachusetts. I grew up in um, Mansfield, Mass., so just right down the road. Um, and I work out of out of my house. Awesome. So <laughs> how did you get the idea to start this business? Yeah, sure. So I, I mean, I've always been into fiber art. So, you know, I was knitting in the third grade. I did that for about 10 years or so. And I picked up crochet just as a hobby, I think like my senior year of college. Now I actually graduated in the midst of the pandemic. So I I came home, like I was in my childhood bedroom. I graduated from there in May of 2020. Um, and I went to school for marketing. So at this time, no, no place is hiring for a marketing position in the middle of a pandemic, right? So I started picking up, I guess, focusing more on crochet as my hobby. And, you know, then I started to have friends and family asking me to make them things. And so it kind of started small. I was like selling just on Instagram through DMs for a little bit. And then I finally picked up, um, you know, an Etsy shop. I switched over to Big Cartel. And then I think it was officially in January of 2021. That's when I branded myself as the Cozy Tangerine because I I enjoyed doing it so much. And I, you know, I, that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> awesome. So can you just talk more about your products? Like what exactly are you selling and how does that separate you from your competition? Yeah. So I, when I started, I was doing a bunch of different things. And so it's, I was actually just talking to a friend about this. I was like, it's funny because when I started, I would, someone would ask me to crochet them something, whether it be a plushie or, um, you know, like a baby hat or something like that, that wasn't really what I wanted to do necessarily, but I was like, yep, it's an order. I'll take it. So over time, I've kind of realized what I enjoy creating, what my customers like and what sells and what doesn't sell. So it it really depends. I do a lot of different things, but I get very um, bored very quickly. So if I crochet a sweater, I'll be like, okay, next thing I'm going to do a mushroom keychain. I'll do 10 of those. And then I'm like, okay, on to hair bandanas and scrunchies. So I do a lot of different things, um, mainly accessories. Like I said, keychains, scrunchies, hair bandanas, so like wearable products as well. Yeah, we do. I do a lot of different things. <laughs> So, but can you just talk more about crocheting? Like what exactly it is and what oh. I mean? Because I think that most people don't even, like, or many yeah. people don't even um, know what it's all about. Yeah, sure. So actually, let me, so I have a, this is what I use. It's a crochet hook. So you basically take this little thing right here and um, with a ball of yarn, you are able to, I guess, I don't know how to say it without using the term crochet, but you're able to like create different products and different items. So whether that be like baby blankets, um, it's a little, it's different from knitting because knitting has two pointed needles, whereas crochet just has one like curved hook. And like I said, I had, I've been knitting for the longest time, but when I started to learn how to crochet, I figured very, figured out very quickly that it is much more versatile and it works up a lot quicker than knitting. So um, you basically just, you hold it like this and you just go to town. <laughs> so in terms of what you're selling, is it, do you have products that are made to order? Like you mentioned that sometimes you're, you're making different products. So how do you know exactly what to make and when? Yeah. Yeah. That's some, that's definitely been a learning curve now, especially for like larger items, those tip like sweaters or 
um, tops, especially apparel, because those are the things that take the longest to make. Um, I typically will just make a one-off item and I'm like, okay, it's up in the shop. Like you, one person can get this. And then once it's gone, it's gone because I like to use different types of yarns. And one thing that I that I have learned that I also like to do is using up a bunch of scrap yarns. So when I say scrap yarns, it's like a, a bunch of different piles of different types of yarns, different brands that are left over from previous projects. So obviously when I create something with a bunch of scrap yarn, it's going to be unique. It's just going to be one of a kind. There's not going to be anything else like that. Now for like made to order items, I I will do this for like smaller items like our scrunchies, our best selling mushroom keychains, which like the top comes off and you can actually put like your chapstick and lighters in there and stuff. <laughs> those those went like crazy viral over the past couple of years on social media. So um, for smaller items where I know like this is the yarn I can this is the yarn I get from this craft store. You know, I know where to purchase all those materials from. Um, that's what I'll do for like made to order items. Yeah. So like, how do you get the word out? How do people like, you know, just find out about your company? Yeah. So I, like I said, I started on Instagram. Instagram is not, I, I, it's not what it used to be as a small business owner on Instagram. I don't know. I found that, I mean, TikTok. I, it took me the longest time to get onto TikTok, <laughs> um, but I have been using TikTok as a platform to get the word out about my products. Now, I don't like just relying on social media because what if, you know, Instagram goes down one day, like TikTok could be gone a couple of weeks from now. So um, I actually work for an SEO company part time. I'm a contractor for them. So I've learned a lot about how to optimize my own website to get that organic search traffic for my items and for my my business itself. So I've been implementing those things for about like a little over two years now I've been with that company. So um, I would say a combination between like social media, SEO. I also do email marketing, which I found is huge because what I do on my website is I will have a little pop-up box and it'll say, you know, 10% off your first order when you sign up for our newsletter. It could be our email newsletter or our text newsletter. We have like an SMS um, option as well. And so, I mean, I do that. Like as a customer, when I see if I'm shopping, I'm like, of course I'm going to sign up if I'm going to get a coupon. So by doing that, then I get people on my email list. So then when I have new product launches or like deals going on and whatnot, I'll just send out emails that way and then i have i've grown my email list quite quite a bit so how is you know joining like the seo company helped your business like where was your revenue at before compared to where it's at now in terms of you know scalability yeah it's it's really interesting because i i use shopify as a platform i i mean i've also learned through my part-time seo job that shopify is one of the best platforms for e-commerce uh, businesses. So I have, I can see every, pretty much every sale that I make, I can see where that person came from, whether it was through Twitter, whether it was through an email. And a lot of the times I, I never started to see this until the past six months or so, it'll say came from an organic search on Google. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so cool. Like I, I never used to see that. So it's, I'm I'm definitely not a very like analytics based person. Like I, I do, I do it at, like as much as I can, but it's not my favorite thing to do. So I do like to see where the, where the, those people are coming from and whatnot, but it's, it's hard to really tell how much, SEO has helped because over the past year I've also like gone viral a couple of times on TikTok and Twitter and so I've gotten a lot of sales from there. I would say implementing like good SEO practices have has given me a more stable income like influx of orders just from people searching on Google like more than I ever had before. So what is your monthly revenue now and like what is your goal to like where you really want to get to? Oh my gosh, it is so different. Like every month is so, so different. Like when I say I had a, a viral um, video in, it was this January, I made like 
$26,000 that month, which that's ridiculous. Like that's never happened to me ever in my life before. I've never seen that, that kind of money. And then, you know, a couple months later, I could have a $1,500 month. It right. really just depends on like the products I'm putting out there. It depends on my, how much effort I'm putting into keeping up with social media, email newsletters. Like it also depends on the time of year. Like the summer is pretty slow for online sales, which is why I like to do a lot of in-person like farmers markets and pop-up events and whatnot. Now this time of year, it's going to hopefully pick up pretty soon. So I could get an average, but it's, it's so. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. I was just curious, but it's like, so you mentioned that you did, you know, 26,000 in January. I mean, that's really good. It's like, what do you think that you need to do to like keep that level of consistency? Because yeah. of course, like it varies by month, but just in general, even on average to have, you know, cause 26,000 to 1500, that's a huge drop off. So it's like, you know, what, what do you think? I mean, so you mentioned SEO, social media, but like, you know, what, what do you think it takes to like, if you're going to really do this, you know, full time and scale this business, like what, what, mm. what would that look like for you? Yeah. So I'll, I think a lot of it is like nurturing the customers that I already have versus getting new customers. I mean, that's we just know in business, like the easiest customer to get is the one that you already have. I I think by doing email marketing, you know, text marketing, like by having those people who have already purchased from me, reaching out to them, even if it's not trying to sell them a product necessarily. Maybe it's like I posted a a yarn haul video on YouTube and I want them to go check it out, you know, by having my brand consistently like in their email, like cozy tangerine, cozy tangerine, cozy <laughs> tangerine. Like they're eventually they will buy buy something, whether it be two weeks from now, two years from now. I all I actually that reminded me, I also started doing um monthly free like downloadable wallpapers for like your iPhone um because I I enjoy like creating those and I've actually found that people who customers who will download those for free like every single month religiously they download it for free and they have to go through the checkout process um it they don't pay anything it's zero dollars but they enter their email their name etc and I've actually had quite a few people who have bought them and or bought them downloaded them for free. And eventually they did buy something from me because of those consistent emails and because they had to sign up for the email to get the free wallpaper. So it's like things like that. I'm I'm always thinking of new ways to, I guess, nurture the, the people who are already like in my my list. Like, that's awesome. That you really like thinking like outside the box. So in terms of, you know, nurturing those people, if you looked into like subscriptions or things like that, people get like different products every month. Like, um, what does that look like for you? Yeah. So I, I need to focus on this more. I, I haven't really done a lot of work on it in a long time, but I opened up a, um, a Patreon, Patreon. Is that how you yeah. It? yeah. Yeah. Patreon. <laughs> um, and so I had the idea to, you know, like for people who were in a tier of like, $3 a month, they would get a sticker every month. So like a monthly sticker club or like $10 a month, you'd get a scrunchie every month. So I I do have a couple people on there, but I need to, I need to work on that a little bit more. <laughs> I've just been so focused on like product, like my actual shop itself. But I think subscriptions could be really cool, especially for, I, ha I have a lot of followers um, and people like in my community who crochet themselves. So that's another big thing is, I also sell the patterns to quite a few of the products that I crochet. So it's just a digital download, like a PD in PDF format. So I have people who follow me and they're like, oh, I want to make this item. They can just purchase the pattern itself. And I don't like to say it like passive income because it's not technically, it's not really passive because I have to stay updated with it and, you know, respond to customers who have questions and whatnot. But um, I, I offer that as well. So that's another stream of income, if you will. So what does it look like for you in terms of scalability? Because you mentioned that you're doing pretty much all of it yourself. So to really scale this business, like what will that take for you? Yeah, I, I yeah. So I've gotten this question. Um, I about a year ago, I got this question. And I was like, you know, maybe one day it'd be really cool to have other people like to be able to hire other crocheters to help me out. The issue that I've kind of come into with that is like quality control, because crocheting can be very different from one person to the other. You know, I could look at a pattern and 
follow it to a T and this person next to me could follow the same pattern and it's going to come out different just based on tension, how you hold your hook, etc. Um, so I kind of over the past year or so I've thought about that. If I ever got to that point where I needed to hire to outsource, I would need to like really sit down and like look at the work that the person does to make sure that it's almost like nearly identical to what I do. Um, but honestly, I kind of I enjoy doing the crocheting myself. And I almost feel like I've thought about this a lot. I'm like, if I were to scale my business and outsource and have a bunch of people working for me, I wonder if that would take away the joy of just being like a small business, you know, like as long as I can, you know, maybe, maybe scale, I come out with more crochet patterns, which are digital downloads. So I'm getting more income from that, which is taking away time that, or I guess giving me more time to work on things. And I'm not, you know, with a digital product, I'm not crocheting. I'm not spending an hour on something. So maybe I look more into that, or maybe I look more into create like monetizing my YouTube channel. There's so many different options. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, definitely there are people that, you know, can offer courses on YouTube and things like mm -hmm. that, or just like on different platforms. Because I mean, just to your point, you have a lot of people that aren't just buying from you to just buy the product, but they actually want to learn how to do it themselves. It's really cool. And it's very, this kind of like niche, you know, market of those types of folks as well. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like double sided. I have the people who want to purchase the items from me. And then I have people who follow me because they also want to crochet things like me. So I... I've kind of had to balance those two things. What would you say is your top business priority going into Q4 of this year? Oh man. Um, honestly, I don't I don't know if this is necessarily a business priority, but it has to do with my business. It's not it's taking time for me and not stressing myself out so much when it comes to Q4 because the past couple of years I have just been go, 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 absolutely grinding and just overworking myself to the point where it's not it's not enjoyable you know I I sign up for too many events I take on too many custom orders whatever so I think my top priority is doing the best that I can without without stressing myself out <laughs> so maybe that maybe that looks like you know just doing a couple of fall winter launches and then that's it not having to be like cranking out new products every single day. Makes sense. So yeah. what would you say is the one biggest piece of advice that you wish you knew before you started this company? Oh, that's a great question. A piece of advice that I wish I knew. Oh my gosh. You shocked me that with that question. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, I don't know. I've learned, I guess that, that nothing's going to be perfect. Um, I'm very much a perfectionist. So I have these ideas in my head. And if it doesn't come out, like, I want to, then I get very frustrated. So I think I don't know if it's necessarily one thing that I wish I knew before, maybe, maybe just like, it's a way like a mindset that I wish I had beforehand is just like, it's going to be a learning curve, nothing's going to be perfect. And that's the joy and beauty of owning your own business oh yeah for sure i think it's something that like you always strive for perfection but even for me it's like and i think as, a, as i've been a higher people it's like they're never they're like 70 80 percent as good as me but like they're still you know helping us scale and it's like i said that okay this person's gonna make this mistake and that's just what it is yeah yeah that's a big thing for me too is it's i'm always like i want things done my way but how are you ever going to be able to grow if you can't delegate tasks you know exactly. yeah exactly so if we're going to have this conversation again in one year from now mm -hmm. where do you expect things to go for your business oh well i i mean if we had this conversation one year ago, we'd be having a very different conversation. So I hope the same thing a year from now, I hope I've grown not to the point where I'm stressed out, but <laughs> maybe I, I'm, I'm learning more, I'm doing more things that will allow me to keep the business going without spreading myself too thin. Well, Jocelyn, we're rooting for you. So if somebody watching this wanted to reach out, do you mind sharing your website or social media handles? Yeah, for sure. So the best way that you can get in touch with me is either on Instagram. My handle is just the cozy tangerine. Um, my website is also thecozytangerine.com. You can reach out through there. 
we're on all the social media platforms. So we're on TikTok, just the Cozy Tangerine, pretty much anywhere we are, the Cozy Tangerine. So that's, um, oh, you can also email me, but that, I mean, same thing there, Cozy Tangerine, the Cozy Tangerine at Gmail. But that is also listed on our website. Well, Jocelyn, thank you so much for your time. And I'm wishing you a very successful Q4 ahead. Thanks so much, Dan. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye.